name is Derek from Tomcat Gas Training and you're about to watch part four of this absolutely amazing, fantastic riveting video on the history of central heating. Now, if this is the first video you're watching, you've started at the wrong place. You need to go back to video one and start from there. Now, if this is the fourth video and you have sat there through one, two and three, what have you been doing with your life? But you must want to see part four Part four's on controls, so let's enjoy. Cheers. This is a Grumfoss pump. As you can see from the pump, we've got two isolation valves with the pump unions. All pumps require isolation valves and pump unions. As long as your central heating system is correctly installed and properly maintained, you could expect your pump to last at least 10 years and possibly up to 20 years. So for ease of uh, replacement and maintenance. If we look actually on the front of the pump, you could probably just see some letters across the top there. Okay, so what they read is, it's a UPS 15-50 130. So what does that mean? Well, the 15 means the size of the bore coming through here. So they can be a 15, a 25, 35. That's the size of the, the flange size here. Now the 50 means it's five meters head. So what does that mean? So you might get a 50, you might get a 60. That 60 would be six meters head. So that means if we got a, because this is a 50, we got a six meter piece of pipe coming off the top of there. This pump would not be able to pump the water out the top because it's a five meter maximum head. It means this pump can only overcome the weight of five meters. Okay. So, and the other one, the 130, is the distance from flange to flange. Okay, so that's the, from the face of the flange, the face of the flange is 130 mil. Okay, so you might be able to see the, the 15, 50 better on that one. There are a few different types of central heating pumps available. There are two speed, three speed and the more modern high efficient pumps which will automatically adjust their speed according to the demand of the central heating system. Now everybody says Grumfoss were the ones who invented it, they weren't, it was Vilo who was making pumps way before Grumfoss. Um, are Grumfoss the best pumps? Grumfoss are the most expensive I think. Um, so maybe that's why everybody thinks they're the best. They've got three speeds on the pumps. If this was installed in a combi boiler, a lot of the time the speed is is not is has been bypassed. It's not there. Okay, but we we need to talk about energy pumps in a minute, but which are in there now. So the three speeds for whatever um, flow rate you wanted coming out of there. Now, if we was to use um, install this on a, a small bore system. Small bore would be 15, 22, 28 mil pipe. We don't want more than one uh, uh, meter a second flowing through there. If we're putting it on micro bore, so if we've got six, eight and 10, we wouldn't want the speed of this pump taking it more than 1.4 meters a second. Now, the reason we need to keep this speed down is because of noise. The faster the water going through the pipe with the smaller the the more, the more noise you're going to get. A central heating pump running too fast can cause your electricity bill to soar as well as making noise in the system, while setting it too slow can mean that your radiators won't heat up as they should. How do we install this pump? Which way round do we install it? Now if it says in the manufacturer's instructions that we should always be looking at putting the shaft horizontal, okay, so it should be always be horizontal. not dipping down like that, not at an angle, but if we were to... Incorrectly installing a pump will lead to noise and a buildup of air within the pump. This will cause the bearings to be damaged and the pump will need replacing. Now there is a flow arrow on there, so you can see the, the flow arrow, and that tells you which direction, but if you can't see that flow arrow, the easiest way to check whether which way is the, the flow in and which is the flow out, so you've got the pump the right way, is this bulge no matter what pump, is always on the flow. So this is where the water flows in and this is where the water flows out. Now inside this pump there are two bearings. 
Okay, there's a bearing at the top and a bearing at the bottom. These bearings always need to be lubricated. In 1855, radiators were invented in Russia by a Polish-born businessman and the modern-day central heating system was born. Nearly 30 years later, in 1883, the first electric heater was invented by Thomas Edison, followed by the first solar water heated system in 1896. So we've got a vent screw here for bleeding. Okay. Now on the new pumps, a lot of the time there is no vent screw. They are ERP pumps, so from 2013, we've had to have energy rated product pumps. So the pumps have got to be able to turn the speed down themselves in combi boilers. In, uh, you can still get them for traditional systems, for Y plan, S plans. You can still get energy pumps. The biggest problem we have with energy pumps is if you've got a microbus system on a combi boiler and it's been piped in wrong years ago and you come to put a new boiler on the system, there might not be enough energy in the pump to get it all the way to the end of the last radiator. And that's because the, the, the PCB in the boiler is monitoring the flow and return temperatures. And if the return temperature starts to creep up too much, it will slow the speed of the pump down to try and get the heat um, out of the radiators. So it loses its energy to get to the last, the, the last radiator. So in that situation, we could get away with it by obviously repiping the system. Or we could put a low loss header in Okay, and I'll explain low loss headers later, that's new technology. A low loss header is designed to provide hydraulic separation between the boiler and the heating circuit, regulating the flow rate and the pressures, improving efficiency and performance. The low loss header can also be used to allow multiple boilers to be joined together on a heating circuit. Now let's continue with the pumps, let's have a look inside these pumps. So, this is the Grunfoss pump. I've taken it apart. So, it's literally four screws. One, two, three, four. Four screws. Take them out. Use an Allen key to remove them. Okay, so the Allen screws. Once you've removed them, you can now see it's in two plates. Now, because this is a Grunfoss pump, 85% of the pumps made, any head will fit the new body. So if you were changing these, a lot of the time you don't have to change this part. Look how good that one is. Look how clean it is. Okay, this has been taken off a central heating system which was installed correctly. The vent pipe was in the right place and the pump is really clean. Okay, so little bit of dirt on there but nothing spectacular so this pump was working when it came out it's just that it's been upgraded to a combi this can stay in position no need to undo the unions no need to um, take it all apart all we've got to do turn the val valves off isolation either side undo the four bolts and we can take it off so how does this work with this is our inlet this is where the water comes in and the water is pumped out if we look on the inside you can see the hole in the middle and that's where the water comes through can you see the screwdriver comes through there okay yeah so that's where it comes through so the water flows through there comes out through the middle then goes through the center of there and is flung out of the impeller this is a centrifugal force pump that means the pump spins the screwdriver through that bit you can now see that's where it comes out so it comes through there down there and out through there and that's how it pumps it around now electrical connections the electrical connections on this pump are incredibly easy as you can see from there we've got live neutral and earth and these have little pullback tabs so you can see as I'm pulling the live back you can see the little gate opening and that's where you would put the wire. There are others where there's a little plug and you can um, undo the plug, screw the screws in and plug it back in. Obviously a wire going through this grommet here. The yellow object in the photograph is a start capacitor. This holds energy allowing the pump to use that energy in startup. Now then, when you're actually installing this, 
One of the main things we've got to be aware of is this electrical connection doesn't want to be sat at the bottom like that because if we bleed, take the bleed screw out, the water would run down into the electrical connections and that's not a good idea. But because we can move it in four different directions, it doesn't matter which way we put this because we can always undo the four screws and move the head into any position we want. Okay, now we can do that with most of the pumps that are out there, yeah? Some of them only have two screws, like the Vilo, um, some of them have the, the four screws. But if you're changing just the head, make sure you use the same head, the same pump manufacturer, otherwise it's not going to work. The way it seals is, you can just see the little gasket, there's like a rubber gasket I'm just pulling up there. That rubber gasket is really good. Okay, you could probably take this off numerous times, put it back on and it would seal. So never be afraid of taking the head off, even if it's in a combi boiler. Don't be afraid of taking the head off because that gasket will still seal. Even though the bodies in most combis are plastic, okay, you could still get a good seal on there. So that's looking inside a, a central heating pump. The difference between the pump in a combination boiler and the pump on a traditional heating system is normally the size of the impeller. Now the next thing I want to talk about is motorised valves. Motorised valves for Y plan and S for plan. Now in the videos before I've mentioned Y plan and S plan. They are the Honeywell names for different types of central heating control system. First thing we're going to look at is the three port valve. So the three port valve, this one is a Danfoss three port valve. It comprises of a body and a motorised head. So you can see from here it says AB on there, it says B on this one and it says A on there. This is where the primary water comes in. From there, when it goes to here, which is A, comes out of there, A goes off to the central heating. B, at this point here, that goes off to the water, which gives you three ways, okay? One where it just sends it to the uh, water or heating and then another way where it sends it into both now I've zoned this over here and it puts it in mid position that means if I blow through here you'll get air coming out of both sides so so you can hear airs coming out of both sides so that's in mid position when you manually open it now I just take it off the, the valve if I blow through now so if I block that one That one's coming out of B, and B is hot water. So its priority is always hot water. The photograph shows the cam which the ball is attached to, which enables the valve to move into these three different positions. So let's have a look at the wiring on this head, okay? So this is for a wide plan. Okay, there's no earth wire, but we've got four wires. The reason why there's no earth wire is because it's plastic. The head's plastic, you can see it's plastic. This one is metal, so this one has an earth wire. You see the earth wire? So the blue is neutral. The goes to the neutral. The orange, that goes to the common on our cylinder stack, okay? Orange to cylinder stack. The grey, that goes to our number two on the cylinder stack. Goes to number 
two on the silistat, which also goes to our hot water off wire. Now, if our hot water off wire isn't there at the programmer or the um, time clock, then you know the Y plan has been wired incorrectly. And then the, the white and grey one goes to our uh, room stat, goes to calling for heat for our room stat. So that's what these wires do. Now let's have a look at a two-port valve. The reason why we call them two-port is because there's just two entries. On the three-port, there's three. On this one, there's just two. So this is off a Honeywell valve. This is the head off it. Made of metal, like we just said with the earth wire. So you can see the plate where it sits on. So you can see these two screw uh, uh, nuts, sorry, here. So one there, one there. What these nuts do is they f the head fits onto that. As you can see from the photograph, I have circled the screw which fits into the nuts. There are only two fixings on this head. Now, for the Honeywell, if the, see that little nipple sticking up there? Can I call it a nipple? Anyway, little raised bit here. This tells me that this head goes on this body and I don't have to drain the system down to remove this head. Okay, again, with this valve, I wouldn't need to re uh, drain the system down to remove the head because I can just take off those two screws. So that one there and there. Now in the old Honeywell ones, if it doesn't have that little raised bit there, okay, then you would have to drain your system just to change the head. Low arrow there, so this is where the flow would come in and the water would come out that way. So if I turn it off and blow, the water comes out. I'm now going to turn the ball, which allows the water to come out. Okay, now we've got the earth wire, which we said was the most, but now got rid of the earth wire, we've still got the same wires, which literally the same colours, but it's slightly different wired. Now, the orange and the grey now are connected via a microswitch. As the stats move the valve, it operates the microswitch, allowing the switch life supply to the boiler. So this would be permanent life, 230 volts coming down this grey wire. And once the valve has worked, it would send the 230 volts down there, down into the orange wire. And that would be a switch live wire to your boiler. The brown wire is what comes from your room stat or your cylinder stat when you're calling for heat. And obviously the blue is a neutral because our motors need a neutral if the 230 volts to work. Three put. What's my two put now? Two put. Some valves. All they do is stop the flow of water. Now you've just finished watching episode four, part one on controls on this amazing video on the history of central heating. If you liked our video, why don't you give us a thumbs up? If you wanna leave us a constructive comment, why don't you do that down below? And while you're down below, why don't you subscribe to our YouTube channel and hit the notification bell? Because every Wednesday we're gonna be releasing some videos. Hope the videos helps in your training. Hope you enjoyed it. See you for part two on uh, controls. Cheers.